All Ooh. right, so I've never been more impressed with a WWDC than the one I just witnessed this past week. So many things about the event just blew me away, and I'm saying this as primarily an Android user. iOS 18 without a doubt is the biggest update for the iPhone yet. So many cool new features, so many customization options, Apple's attention to detail is immaculate and it's very prevalent in this update. And Siri is now officially on steroids. Siri really went from not being able to set a timer to now becoming the best virtual assistant we've ever seen hands down. There is a lot to break down in this video, so let's get right down to it. I've been feeling so small. Watch the clock ticking off the wall. How's it going everyone? My name is RJ and I've had iOS 18 on my iPhone 15 Pro Max for the past three days. I'll speak on my experience with the iPhone 15 Pro Max running iOS Beta 1 and then towards the end of the video, we'll talk about whether or not this massive update will entice me to leave behind my S24 Ultra and go back to the iPhone 15 Pro Max as my primary phone. Make sure to subscribe, we have a lot to talk about. More videos are coming. Quite honestly, iOS 18 just changed the game. I usually advise people to never update to a beta on their primary phone, but surprisingly for a beta, iOS 18 has been pretty stable thus far. All of my apps are working just fine, no app freezes, no app crashes, everything's running as smooth as possible, fingers crossed. The battery though is slightly worse and the phone does feel a bit hotter than usual. So if you do want to update and just test out iOS 18, it's completely up to you, but that's just my two cents. Apple's attention to detail is always next level, and you immediately notice that on iOS 18. When you adjust the volume levels now on this phone, you can quite literally see the bezel expanding from the side of the phone when I increase and decrease volume levels. Like, no one even asked for this, but admittedly, it's unnecessarily satisfying. And then we have the flash light update that everyone's losing their minds over. When you toggle the flash light, you get this nice new animation that looks really clean. Within this animation, you can adjust the intensity of the light, which technically we were able to do before on iOS 17. But on iOS 18, you can even adjust the radius of the light. I mean, who even asked for this? I'm never probably going to use this feature, not even once. But once again, Apple's attention to detail is just out of this world. And you see a lot of this on iOS 18. Now, customizing your phone is nothing new. I mean, we've been able to do this on Android for many, many years now but it's nice to see Apple finally join the party. It's kind of crazy, but this home screen reminds me of my jailbreaking iPhone days, where I would just spend hours upon hours tweaking my home screen to my liking, and then going to school the next day and trying to impress my friends. You know what I'm talking about, we've all been there, we've all done that. Those were the good old days. On iOS 18, customization is actually really good. You now have the option to put apps and icons into dark mode, or if you want, you can even tint your apps. You can even choose any color from your background wallpaper and make that the default color for all of your apps. Like, the customization is really good. You can even toggle this sun icon right here to darken the background wallpaper. Customization on iOS is sort of like Google's Material U, but Apple even forces third-party apps to comply with the color theme. I'm actually kind of surprised by just how much we can customize our iPhones now. You can even customize these two apps on the lock screen. I never thought I'd see the day. This honestly is so useful. Instead of using the default camera app, I can now use the Kino app. I've been using this app for the past few weeks. It basically lets you record an Apple ProRes log and also adds an instant color grade while you're filming. There are a ton of color grades to choose from. I think it's about 24 Canadian dollars. It's totally worth it if you want that movie cinematic color graded look to all of your videos. For all of you out there who are into some pretty freaky shit, on iOS 18, you can now lock an app or lock and hide an app. And it requires Face ID to unlock these apps. Real talk though, I think this can be very useful, especially in a scenario where your iPhone gets stolen while it's unlocked. Say as an example, you store a lot of crypto on your phone in a wallet. You can now add an extra layer of security by locking and hiding the app. It's pretty useful for a ton of scenarios. Another pretty crazy feature is eye tracking. Now, it's still in its infancy, but I've been really impressed thus far. We've seen this before on the Vision Pro, and we've also seen it before on the Galaxy S4. At that time, most people wrote it off as an Android gimmick. But now it's available for iOS and iPadOS, and that's a game changer. You pretty much use your eyes to navigate your screen. If you focus on an app for two seconds, it opens up that app. Here in this example, I'm using my eyes to open up Instagram. Go to the homepage and then go into my DMs. All of this is done by just using my eyes. This is an accessibility feature for now, but I can see this becoming a new way to navigate our phones in the future. Humans by nature are lazy, and if eye tracking means we can mindlessly scroll social media without lifting a finger, then I think eye tracking will be vastly adopted. Here's a change to iOS that I really don't like. The control center is now completely revamped and features circular icons. I think the old control center did look a little bit better. Obviously, it's a matter of preference. Over on Twitter, some people love it and some people just hate it. Nonetheless, you can pretty much customize anything within the control center now. You can even resize a toggle if you want. The one change that I don't like is how Apple replaced the cellular toggle icon with the airdrop toggle. I mean, this makes no sense to me. A lot of us don't have unlimited data plans and we like to toggle data on and off. 
And the thing is, you can't even customize a section. That's why over on my lock screen, I have cellular data set up as a quick toggle. Since we're already changing up our home screens with all of these customizations, you might as well change up your current case with one of these amazing cases from ESR. Starting off with the ESR soft cloud case with stash stand. This is a protective case that's actually not bulky with some very useful features. It's got a super soft finish on the inside with 3x grade military protection and up to 11 feet of drop protection thanks to the shock absorbing guard corners. The do it all stash flips out from the case and lets you put your phone in landscape or portrait mode on a table or anywhere you like. And because of its super strong magnetic lock, it'll hold any MagSafe accessory while you are using the stand, even a MagSafe power bank. And then we have the ESR hybrid case, which gives you that same added protection, but you still get to enjoy the color of your iPhone. This titanium gray iPhone just looks so good in this case. The ESR Tough case offers all the features of the previous two cases, but it comes with a 4x military grade protection and a built-in Armorite screen protector. Like the screen protector is built in with the case. I think that's a genius idea. Honestly, I love ESR products. I've used them actually before I had a YouTube channel, so I can definitely vouch for them. Links to all the ESR accessories mentioned in this video are down below in the description. And thanks to ESR for sponsoring this video. So far, this update is good, but nothing we haven't seen before, right? But all of that changed with Apple Intelligence in an update coming this fall. And this is what will most likely have me running back to the iPhone. Calling AI Apple Intelligence is such a typical Apple move, but a master marketing ploy. I mean, my parents will be calling it Apple Intelligence, not artificial intelligence. So well played, Apple. Apple Intelligence will only be available for the iPhone 15 Pro and the 15 Pro Max. The regular iPhone apparently doesn't have enough RAM. Apple Intelligence is AI that understands you. It draws on your personal information like your text messages, emails, screenshots, visited Safari websites, and much more. This helps it to understand you and give you relevant content. It can prioritize notifications, it can rewrite proofread emails, and it can even summarize web pages for you. And the crazy thing is, all of this is done via on-device processing, which means it's aware of your personal data without collecting personal data. There's no third-party communication with the cloud. Siri is now on steroids. Siri can now understand you when you mess up conversation. Siri now follows along and maintains conversational context. Siri is now aware of everything you're doing on your screen, and this changes everything. One part of Apple's presentation truly showcased the power of the new Siri, and this totally blew me away. Let's say you're filling out a form and that document requires your personal information from your license. You can now tell Siri to fill out that document for you, and Siri will go into your photo library, find your license, extract your license information and fill out that document all without you having to lift a finger no other virtual assistant is doing this right now i mean technically chat gpt can do that but they don't have access to everything on your smartphone like siri will this fall should be very interesting i'm curious to see how samsung responds with one ui 7 and galaxy ai but i have a feeling it won't nearly be on the same level of what siri is capable of right now not to mention Apple partnered with ChatGPT. So whenever it's deemed necessary, Siri will work with ChatGPT to get things done for you. This is probably the most gangster screenshot of 2024, Siri working with ChatGPT. This screenshot showcases the power of Apple intelligence and just how far Apple's gone in the AI race from seemingly out of nowhere. Elon Musk wasn't too happy about this partnership with OpenAI, but I feel like he's a bit confused with this partnership and how ChatGPT will work. It's all onboard processing, meaning that your input isn't processed through a cloud server and then back to your phone. Everything is done on device. That's why the iPhone 15 won't be getting Apple intelligence. It doesn't have enough competing power. I hope that makes sense. So what does this mean for me and my S24 Ultra? Well, for now, this initial update isn't anything too special. It's everything we've seen before on Android already with Apple's own unique touch. For now, the S24 Ultra will be my daily driver. But come this fall, I don't know, man. The iPhone 16 and Apple intelligence is calling my name. But we'll see how hard Samsung punches back. Thanks so much for watching. If you guys made it to the end of this video, drop a dolphin emoji down in the comments below. I would love to know who the real ones are. Don't forget to check out today's sponsor, ESR. These are some actually really nice cases. I'll catch you guys all in the next one. And don't forget to flex with your Apple intelligence tech. The future is going to be crazy.